Hello, Eleanor. Hi, Jules. Welcome. <laughs> thank to you, with Jules. Thank you for having me. How incredible is your house? Oh, thank you. You know what? It means a lot coming from you. It really does because I know that you have really good taste. Oh my goodness, you have incredible taste. I walked in and my jaw dropped. Oh it's wow! So beautiful. Oh, thank, thank you, you so for much. Having me. I'm so glad you could come. Really, we've been trying to make this happen for a really long time, and yeah. we finally we can finally have tea. <laughs> we can finally have tea. Thank you for coming. We are going to just have a chat about like life and love and business yeah. and Sounds beautiful good. skin. <laughs> All of those <laughs> your things. Your skin looks amazing. Oh, wow. Just all the compliments from you today. Thank you. And yours. Let's not even oh, talk about you. yours. I try to look after it. Well, it's sort of, it kind of is your business, isn't it? Your um, yes and no. I also think it's just part of my health. Yep. Just like I go to the gym and... I go to Pilates two, three times a week and I try and do yoga and I meditate. Looking after my skin for me is just a part of my health. It's like, you know, trying to eat right. I, it doesn't make sense to me to do all of those things and then not look after my skin. So it just comes really naturally. Do you have a wonder product? We're just going to oh start with the gosh, products. Gosh, there's so many. There's so many good ones. And it's definitely about finding what works for you because obviously we can have different skin types. One product that I've used since I was probably 18 years old is SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. Mm -hmm. It's like a liquid treatment, and I just put that on after I cleanse and before my serum. And I love a deeply, deeply hydrating serum. I love the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. It's got hyaluronic acid in it, and skin loves hyaluronic acid. So okay. I generally will keep those two as my mainstays, and then everything else kind of changes when I'm testing products. Yep. Okay. All right. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> Get on it. So now we've got that out of the way, I want to take it a little bit deeper and, and kind of dive into the wonderful world of you and Gritty Pretty and how this all came about. Mm -hmm. You're a small town gal, yes, just definitely. like me. I grew yeah. up in Adelaide and you grew up on the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. And I feel like from what I've read and listened to about you, we have semi-parallel kind of lives in mm. our upbringing and how we were raised and mm -hmm. coming from a small town and you know, humble beginnings, I suppose. You mm -hmm. carry that through with you into your life and it's always sure. a part of who you are. Do you feel the same way? I definitely think so. I think so much of my past has brought me to where I am in saying that I look at the person who, or the woman that I was even 10 years ago and I've definitely changed and I've come into my own. I think for me, there was something when I turned 30, I really came into my own. Wow. And um, that was very recently, by the way. Last December, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I turned, yeah, turned 30 last year. Up until that point, I, I do think that, you know, my childhood brought me to this point. I think being, you know, the eldest of two girls, um, you know, has shaped me into the person that I am. I'm very, very protective of my sister in particular. Um, she's forever 12 in my mind. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes with being the eldest. Um, yeah, like you, my mum was a stay-at-home mum and such an amazing gift that, that, that she could give us. And then my dad worked in small business our whole lives. And I think when you have parents who work in small business, you are privy to, to a life that perhaps others aren't. Mm -hmm. You know, you really do, even subconsciously when you're young, see the struggles that come with that. And I remember, you know, being nine or 10 years old and seeing those financial struggles and seeing how difficult it was for my parents to, to raise a family on one income and run a small business. And I think that has also then shaped who I am. It's shaped the way that I choose to lead my team and the way that I treat them. And then also moving forward, the way that my husband and I choose to, you know, I guess, be a family together. Mm. I think all of that brings you to, to where you are. And so you worked your way through the beauty industry, mm -hmm. I suppose. Your dad was running a news agency, mm -hmm. and so you were exposed to magazines mm -hmm. from the outside, I suppose. Yeah. And then you got yourself on the inside yeah. and worked your way up in the beauty industry mm -hmm. that way. Beauty editor of InStyle and Famous magazine, mm -hmm. and then kind of a dream, I suppose, or an inkling oh, gosh, I a don't passion. know if it was a dream I think it was I was 25 and rather naive I okay. think more than anything I definitely had gotten to a point when I was 
I was about three, three and a half years into my role as beauty editor at InStyle magazine. And I worked in publishing my whole life, like you said. But I, I think I'm one of those people that gets itchy feet if I'm not being pushed, if I'm not learning something new, if I'm not challenging myself. Mm. And if I start to feel like life is getting a little stagnate, then I've, I've just got to change that. Where do you think that comes from? Because I'm a bit like that. I think it comes back to, again, my parents. I, I really do. I think I think it's partially that and then partially just who we are when we're born. I think it's just a part of my soul almost. Yeah. So I toyed with the idea of going freelance, not to launch Gritty Pretty, not to start a business, not to launch a digital company. I toyed with the idea of simply just working for other magazines because I think I had gone to a point with my beauty writing where I just didn't feel challenged anymore. And to be honest, I kind of lost the spark. Mm. for what I was doing although at the same time that six months of making that decision I battled a lot with self-doubt and I was only 25 so again I was young I think when you're young you definitely have some sense of naivety which in my case I think was probably a good thing and I just thought if I don't make this jump then I'm never gonna know and you know I've just also got to I guess try and um, have faith in my experience and mm. in my skills as a beauty journalist but then I would have days where I'd wake up the next day and be like god who's gonna hire me who would book me for freelance am I gonna be able to pay my rent am I gonna eat you know me goreng every night of the week <laughs> just to get by um and then the next day I would be no no I think I've got it I think I can do it mm. and it was this constant up and down and up and down for about six months and then finally I think I had reached a place to be honest where I was quite unhappy in my career and my husband who was my boyfriend at the time he just said to me look I think I think you should probably just take the leap now thought about it for six months and mm. he was very very supportive I remember he did say to me actually you know look even if you want to take a couple of months off work and just figure it out and I'll support us and whilst that was wonderful to hear I wouldn't stand for it mm. I was like there's no way you're paying a dollar for me wow. I didn't want him to cover my rent I didn't want him to pay for anything mm -hmm. and I've always had that sense of um I need to have financial independence mm -hmm. but it was lovely that he offered mm -hmm. and then finally I think I just yeah one day got the balls to walk into my editor's office and I quit and I remember I resigned on a Friday and I I felt sick like I, th I felt sick at the thought of going in there and leaving this dream job at this dream magazine it was mm -hmm. in style magazine I had the most beautiful team and then she said to me look I just really need you to think about it over the weekend what will it take for you to stay and I had worked up all this courage and I had tried to suppress all this anxiety to make this decision and then when she threw that kind of spanner in the works I was like oh my god what do I do now <laughs> mm -hmm. just giving me the time to think about yeah. it yeah and I did think I was like you know could I go part-time is that what I want do I want more of a flexible lifestyle and I just thought, you know what, I've come this far. I, I need to make this decision for myself and I need to see what it's like to be a freelance beauty writer. And so I went in on the Monday and politely declined. And then I ended up starting to freelance and I started writing for the newspapers and other magazines and a whole host of different titles. And I loved that I could just write in a different tone again. So I started to get my spark back. And then at that same time, Gritty Pretty had been sitting dormant. And so I thought, well, I might as well start editing that again and write about the products that I'm personally passionate about, the products that perhaps I didn't have space on my pa magazine pages to include. And so I started that. And then within about four months, I saw a return in traffic in my audience and I started to see revenue come through the site. And that is really when I thought, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it properly. I'm gonna save all my money from my freelance writing mm -hmm. and channel it into what is now become the business. And the business is, it's essentially a blog, mm -hmm. but it has the online magazine element, which is yeah. gritty pretty. Yeah. We come to you for all of our beauty questions and needs and inspiration. Yeah. I think the way I kind of wanted to create Gritty Pretty was just beauty minus the bullshit, because as we know as women, there's so much shit out there. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much stuff that doesn't work. Yep. There's so many brands that make false claims. And even though beauty can be subjective and certain products can work for different women, at the end of the day, there's a lot of marketing spin out there. And so my approach and um, the approach of all my beauty editors, it's our job to edit the market down. Mm-hmm. We'll assess whether a product is really efficacious, if it does what it says it's going to do, and if it's worth your time and worth your money. Okay. And that's what ends up going on Gritty pretty.com so you save us all the time and effort we try to (laughs) try to (laughs) thank you for that (laughs) no it's beautiful and guys if you haven't checked it out please please grittypretty.com go check it out i feel like it's you in a website there is a vibe and a style that you put out into the world that gritty pretty puts out into the world and it's like it's like eleanor's brain you know (laughs) in a blog Mm -hmm. in a in a website it's Mm -hmm. it's beautiful and gorgeous thank you here's what i know about you Mm -hmm. from my personal encounters oh gosh (laughs) (laughs) i always get from you that you are so kind oh thank you truthfully uh, the the ultimate compliment yeah i think it is too because whenever i see you in a room full of human beings or even when you're busy and i've seen you in a working environment you always take the time to come and say hi and check in and do you feel like kindness is one of those gifts when you give it to other people it can propel them and yourself forward into whatever it is you're doing yeah I think so I also just think it's easier to be a nice person I think Mm -hmm. anyone who's you know dare I say a bit of a dickhead that takes a bit of effort you know and you're expelling negative energy which you would only feed off yourself and then feeds onto others and I think it's just I don't know it just kind of is easier to go through life being kind to people and I think the thing that I've I'm, I'm a very naturally empathetic kind of person mm. um, and I think from a very young age I've always just been aware that everyone's fighting their battles, you know, like everyone has their Instagram highlight reel but behind all of that everyone has their own personal shit going on and I think it's really important just to remember just to be nice to people because you don't know what's going on with that person Mm. or what's happening with their family or their health or whatever it might be and it's just so much easier Mm -hmm. to be nice to people how do you handle people that aren't nice i generally will distance myself Mm. i choose to surround myself with people who provide their best energy and that i can you know soak that in from them you certainly can in any industry or any walks of life you can come across people who are like that who perhaps aren't kind or or negative um or self-seeking and i choose not to have anything to do with them it's mm-hmm. as simple as that yeah, yeah. good attitude <laughs> yeah. or kill them with kindness yeah yeah for sure I mean like like I said if someone treats you poorly and you respond the same way you kind of lost out it's true just by doing that yeah well I think you do a great job of, oh, of spreading the kindness <laughs> thank you yeah I just think it's, it's easier we've yeah. all got to look after each other at the end of the day it's true yeah especially women how do you feel about that being in each other's corners? There's a mm. lot of, um, you know, talk about that, women supporting mm. women. How do you think that actually physically plays out, women supporting women in a practical sense? I think it's about simple mindfulness. Just having that level of empathy to understand what another woman is going through. Mm-hmm. She may um, draw on your support in any way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. She may need someone just to simply listen and that might be a woman's ear. I think it's just about putting actions into place. We say women supporting women, but what is that? You know, is it making sure that you, you know, catch up for tea or coffee with a friend who you know is going through a really hard time? Is mm-hmm. it sending them a text message just when you know that things aren't great for them? Is it sending someone flowers? Whatever it might be, mm-hmm. I think it's just important to practice being present Mm. whenever you are trying to Mm -hmm. support anybody do you know what i think it is as well as Mm. all of those things is being happy Mm. for other women yeah for sure and not looking at someone else someone else's life and wishing it were yours or i think it's human nature that some people can become jealous of others Mm -hmm. and i think once you can find contentment in yourself then you won't have that that's the key isn't it finding contentment in yourself it's true. 
Do you feel like you've come to that place? In my individual self, yes, definitely. Mm. Yeah, and I like I said, I think it had something to do with turning 30. Yeah, what, what was that? What? I was so excited. <laughs> I have this theory that, you know, a lot of people think about turning 30 and they start getting anxious. And yep. it's because, you know, growing up they may have seen their parents were at a certain place at 30. Mm. And they've always had this concept of they had to have bought a house or have been in a certain place in their career and have a family all by the age of 30 mm. and I think there's too much of an expectation placed on that and I was I think again just really happy with who I have become mm. and the confident person that I have now become that when I turned 30 I was just pumped I was mm. so excited that's so yeah. like inspiring because it I is a scary cool, age you know yeah. I thought how amazing that I've, I'm about to go into this next decade of my life yeah and for me you know and I think for a lot of people your 20s is filled with so much uncertainty and you're still mm. figuring out a lot of things mm. I don't even feel like I've peaked yet wow. I feel like that's still to come and maybe that'll happen in this decade that's exciting mm. Yeah, it is exciting. You know, looking at you from the outside, I mean, everything's together. You know, like <laughs> you've got this booming, you've got a booming business. You've got a very handsome husband, very handsome. Um, who is also <laughs> kind. You're beautiful. Oh, all all of you. those things, it it has come together. Mm. Um, for a lot of women and men, by the time they reach thirty, mm. that I think the anxiety sets in when something hasn't come together mm. you know they haven't found their husband mm. or they didn't have the baby mm -hmm. they wanted mm -hmm. or you know they didn't start the business and that they, they don't like their job or or whatever it is at that point mm. where it's such a milestone if you could I don't know make an offering I suppose to someone who feels like something's missing mm. because I mean I've just said it looks like everything's together from mm. your point. Of course it's not because you're a human being mm. and there there's stuff going on that no one will ever know or see. Mm. You're fighting your own battles. Mm -hmm. Like everything is not perfect mm -hmm. or as it seems yeah. from the outside. And I think I've always been mindful, you know, whenever I am speaking in a public forum to talk about that, mm. running a business, it might seem like it's easy, but God, it's hard. Yeah. You know, I'm responsible for seven people now in my team and that's seven lives I think about, mm. that's seven families I think about, seven people who have mortgages and they have their own expenses to pay. Mm. And that responsibility is never lost on me. It's so easy to assume that things are great for everyone, but like you said, we've all got our battles and I'm human, you're human, you know, things happen. Mm. But I think it's important to also acknowledge that I am a private person in the fact that there are things that I will keep to myself mm. because I like to process them in private, mm -hmm. but I have no problem admitting that I've got my own shit going on. Yeah. 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 And coming to that place of self-confidence mm -hmm. that you say you've arrived at, mm -hmm. I suppose, mm -hmm. turning 30, mm -hmm. do you think it was because of what you've achieved? Is it, a, is it both? Is it personally? Mm -hmm where you're at with yourself mm -hmm. as well as this life you've built for yourself coming together? That's a good question. I think it's an amalgamation of three things. One, running a business. Mm. I think you were never put under so much pressure until you have run your own business mm. and you feel the responsibility that comes with that. I think in starting Gritty Pretty as, as the digital media company that it's now become, I've had to learn things on the fly I've had to educate and empower myself and I've had to walk into boardroom meetings and bluff my way through them mm. and I think that I've, I've learned a lot from about myself throughout that experience I often think of myself as like an introvert in an extrovert's world the other thing is certainly just a place I've come to personally within myself. And then the third thing is my husband. And I've been with him for 10 years. Mm. He's, yeah, he's my biggest supporter. And I think it's very rare to find, and you would know because you and Guy have been together for so long. It's very rare to find someone at such a young age. I was only 20 when I met my husband. Mm. And to go through those formative years yeah. and grow into the, the, the now confident woman that I am when I, I was not at all confident when we met mm. and for him to champion that and for him to also grow as a man mm. at the same time I think is so so rare and so special yeah so I think it's 
it's a mixture of those three things. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's. I think that's a, a well-rounded answer because it's, it's never just one thing if you're putting all of your eggs in, okay, I've got a great business, therefore I'm confident mm. and my self-esteem is at an all-time high, but this over here, your personal life or whatever it is, is not you know mm. functioning mm. then it's not well it's not a well-oiled machine yeah it's, exactly it'll break yeah it'll break down at some yeah. point if one cog stops turning it can kind of send everything else off into a spin yeah yeah and yeah. it's hard yeah to get it all working well, you just time. figure it out as you go along yeah. as well you know like no one has all the answers i was listening to an offline mm-hmm. <laughs> alison rice's <laughs> podcast which we're all obsessed I love with her. i know have she's, you met her yeah, she oh. came on team with oh, Jules. Yeah. Oh, she's heaven. She's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I, just, I just love her. Yeah. She's like a little angel. She is. You talked about when you first met Matt, who is now your husband, mm-hmm. um, and you were coming out of another relationship mm. that wasn't great. Mm. Now, Guy and I have a foundation that we run and we work a lot with women who are experiencing, mm-hmm. you know, coming out of relationships that have been mm. abusive or mm-hmm. bad for them. Mm. I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about that part of your life and the coming out of it and the building back of your esteem Mm. and Mm. becoming who you are right now I think for me that's I almost look back on my early early years in my very first relationship my you know my high school love and I I just realized how young I was Mm. you know and at that age I met I mean I met my high school boyfriend when I was probably 15 and I think we must have dated till about 18 Mm -hmm. and it was a very very much a manipulative type of relationship it was extremely toxic Mm. and I didn't have any strength to stand up for myself I mean I was I look back and I think to myself even I I might not have thought at the time but I was a child looking back I had no confidence because that had very slowly been etched away by this person what sort of things was happening to Um, be etched away at i would say majority just verbal abuse being called names over and over and over again and i won't say the certain names because they're very derogatory type names Mm. but not things that a partner who is who you're both willingly in a relationship in is ever meant to call you Mm. i just didn't know how to get out Mm. And so I never left it. It was a situation where um, my boyfriend at the time had entered the relationship and I look back and I'm so grateful that he did because I don't actually think I had the strength to. Mm. Did you ever believe what he said to you to be true of yourself? Yeah, yeah. I think it had gotten to a point where I truly didn't think that I was a good person. I truly didn't think that I was a beautiful person just because someone had etched away at every part of my soul. And it took a long time for me to rebuild that. Mm. And I think I mentioned that I met Matt, my husband, only two years later, so when I was 20. And I was still at that point battling with a lack of self-confidence and very, very low self-esteem to the point where, and I mentioned this on Offline, that when we got together, my husband is very, very handsome. Like he could be a model, but he, he would never want to be because he's way too shy and humble. But I remember thinking to myself, surely he's been dared by a friend to date me. That, and that was a rational thought that I had, where I thought to myself, that has to be the reason because why on earth would he ever take interest or want to spend time with me, let alone officially date me. And I look back now and there's almost like a disconnect with that person. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel sad yeah. for her, for me for, at that time. Yeah. But it's almost like I'm now reached a point where I've regained who I am a hundred times fold. Mm. It, I don't know. It's almost like there's just this disconnect from it now. It feels like a different life. Yeah. At the time, it was pretty shitty. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I certainly had to go through a huge amount of self-work just to figure out who I was, especially in those early, early years, which mm-hmm. is another reason why I feel so deeply grateful to have met my husband when I did. And I think, yeah, I never thought I would be that that woman who would like, you know, marry the guy that she meets when she's 20 years old. Mm-hmm. But I just think now, like, how lucky am I that I, I will get to spend even longer um, of my life being married to who I think is 
best man in the world. I love how much you love him. Oh, he's just the best. <laughs> he really is. He's, um, I don't know how to even describe him sometimes. He's, he, he uplifts everyone that he meets. And you are right. Like, I, I started dating Guy when I was 20 oh, as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We do a parallel life. the same person. Yeah. How old was Guy? <laughs> He, well, he's two, two years younger than me. Yeah. So Matt was 22 when we met. There you go. Oh, no. He's two years younger than me. Oh, two years younger. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So he was 18. He was 18. No way. I know. It's he babies. loves to bring that up, by the way. <laughs> Still, to this got day. Those, you've got those two years. And <laughs> <laughs> two weeks and two, two years and two weeks apart. So for that two, two. weeks, I'm yeah. like three years older. Oh, my gosh. And he loves to talk wow. about that. Yeah, it's very That's annoying. That's bizarre. We're two years, two months apart. Oh my gosh! Of a day. Wow. Mm. Whenever I share about you know our story that, mm. um, for, for people that haven't heard it before, I, I mm. just didn't realise or whatever. It is an all-consuming like wow. That was shocked. So right? rare. <laughs> it's so rare and so amazing. Yeah. Because you grow, you essentially grow up together. You, you do. Yeah. yeah. You either grow up and. Mm-hmm grow together or Mm -hmm. you just don't yeah yeah Yeah, I thank God that we have very similar morals Mm. we have very similar upbringings as well Mm. but I think if you just keep your eye on the prize and you Mm. just keep looking at each other to create what it is that you want it to be Mm. it doesn't matter about what's going on on the outside that to me that is the definition of success you know, when I think about success, I think about, for me, it's certainly a sense of creative freedom and creating work that has no boundaries and I'm not afraid to um, experiment and, and do whatever mm. I like. But then the other side of success to me is is growing as a family. And, and when I look at my life, it's about creating that family with Matt, our future family, and just creating this life together mm. that is just cohesive and runs smoothly yeah as best it can yeah relationships certainly take work and marriages take work and you know we all have our days but um yeah when you you know being married to someone is a choice yeah and I think if you're choosing to spend your life with one individual human you've got to be nice to them yeah you've got to like each other you've got to make it fun (laughs) I know, I don't want to Yeah, do and it. it should be fun. It I think should that's the be. thing. Yeah. When I think of Matt, I just, he's like my best friend, like the person closest to me. And I love that different definition of success. It's just keep your eye on the prize. Yeah, just for sure. keep looking at the thing that you want. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, um, I just spoke to Janie Johnson um, from Blacklist yes, before. I love her. She's brilliant. Yeah, she is. And um, I was just confessing to her how I sometimes struggle with with that Mm. and looking into other people's lanes Mm. um and I try my very best just to stay in my own lane Mm. eye on the prize and just do what I'm doing but then like you kind of like there's so much to look at on the outside there's so much to scroll through and so many blogs to read Mm. and so many people that you meet and you're like wow you're doing that that's amazing and Mm. it it can be hard to, to not hear the white noise and Mm. the distraction and just Mm. how do you teach me your ways Eleanor I am I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing but I when it comes to my business I don't look at any other beauty platforms period just don't log on great yeah I'm big believer in osmosis and I think um if you see something subconsciously you might be inspired down the track and that's fine but I think yeah you've to create original work, you've just got to stay in your lane. Mm. And I've always very much had the work ethic of just put your head down and just work. Mm-hmm. And I've just applied that in a mental capacity, I think. What about personally? I think, you know, it is a challenge with things like Instagram because, again, you're posed with someone's highlight reel. But I think it just comes back to the place that you're at with yourself. You know, if I'm seeing images of... Um, you know, say a woman who looks incredible in a swimsuit, I don't look at that and want to be that. I just think she just looks really beautiful. Mm. She looks great and that looks great on her. Mm. Or if, um, I mean, I've got small boobs, but if I see someone with bigger boobs, I don't want that because this is what I've got. Right. So I think it's just about being content with who you are. And if you can do that, then you shouldn't be able to look into other people's lanes too much. Mm. 
And if you're not happy with where you are, if you're not content, then get to work on creating that for yourself. Yeah. Like nothing is handed to people on a silver platter. And what that's one thing I've always tried to, you know, vocalise is that this business didn't just magically appear. The life that my husband and I have created didn't just happen mm. or was handed to us. Mm. We've had to work really, really, really hard yep. to create that. And if you're not happy with something in your life, then no one's going to change it but you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think you are right. You create, you create your own life. Mm-hmm. You get to yeah. choose. You Definitely. get to wake up every day and go, yeah. I don't want this anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. Mm. Or I want this. Mm-hmm. I'm going for it. Mm. It's up to you. It's easy for people to feel like... Yeah, the world's throwing things at them and, and that certainly can happen. But perspective is a choice. And if you can choose to take the positive perspective around a mm. situation, that can generally pull you out. And you meditate on that, don't you? Not regularly. I'm a terrible um, meditator. Is um, that because you're... Because I'm the same, because I'm like distract I'm like this I've so got to do this and I just have yeah. the list going through my head busy. I can't I can't sit still and answer my pants too busy but I can feel it when I really need it yeah and I can feel you know almost like I'm losing a bit of control over an aspect of my life mm-hmm. that's when I will meditate to ground myself yeah I'm definitely not a twice a day kind of gal I wish I was same but I also now think maybe that's okay that I just tap into it when I need it yeah yeah that's good and not beating yourself up about yeah. it. I used to feel guilty. I was like, God, I should meditate every morning and night for 20 minutes. <laughs> Everyone says you should do that. Yeah. And then I was just like, mm, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. So I just do it when I need to and when I can. I'm going to ask you one last final closing question. What do you want your legacy in this lifetime Ooh. to be? What do you want to be remembered for? I hope the legacy that I leave is just that I have touched and inspired and helped people i think if we can if i can live my life doing that i'll be very happy to leave this earth love it well you definitely inspire me oh thank you (laughs) likewise (laughs) thank you for coming for tea thank you for having me thanks for coming to my house (laughs) let's do this again sometime yeah sounds good thank you thank you Eleanor.